Kosher salt. Texture finish. Rust finish paint. Rust finish activator. What? What am I doing? This is the piece. This is what I'm working on. I guess you guys are just gonna have to hang out. Hey everybody, step one, prep and clean. I do it with all my pieces before I do anything else. Hello everybody, all you good people of the world. My name is Kristana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. We are going to do something, hopefully, hopefully it will turn out the way, I don't really have a plan. You guys are on this journey with me. I am going to try to do some chippy, layered, textured, crackled, rusty, whatever it is, we're gonna try it. I was on a trip this weekend with my family and I saw this pole here, I'm gonna show you guys, it doesn't look like much, but this was in Luxembourg and it kind of inspired me to do maybe kind of a weathered finish with some greens and maybe we'll add a couple pops of color in there, maybe we'll add some rust texture. We're gonna play around with this kosher salt and see if I can get some more texture on here. So. I'm gonna be using a texture additive, which is a little bit finer of a texture. And then we're gonna go in with some kosher salt and we're going to create some more rough edges and more of a weathered look. I don't know, this might work out. I don't know. We're just winging it, right? That's art, we're winging it with the art. So, stay here guys, because we are going to have fun. I decided for this piece, I wanted to add some industrial wheels to this. So I'm going to show you guys how I did that. What I did is I needed a mini pry bar, I needed a claw hammer, I needed diagonal cutters, and I am going to use a washer with a Craig jig screw and I'm going to use a drill. So the first thing that you need to do is take your mini pry bar and you're going to gently go underneath this pre-existing foot and you're going to pry it up. There were long nails in it, so just be very careful of that when you are pulling it up. And then once you pull it completely off, you can see that there are still nails right there. So once I pulled it completely off, I took my diagonal cutters and I made sure I cut them. Again, be careful because this will go flying. And then I took my claw hammer and I hammered in the rest of it so that I made sure that I pushed those nails in so that they would be flush with the surface and that way I wouldn't have any issues. The next step was for me to put the wheel in the best place possible. So if I, this piece is not heavy and it's not going to be something that I'm going to be setting a lot of stuff on. So I didn't need to add a piece of wood for that fourth hole. Having the three holes screwed in is going to make it secure enough and all the wheels are going to have it. So what I did is I set it the way I wanted it and then I am taking a Craig screw and I'm putting a washer there so that way this will just secure it even more and I am going to screw that down and this is going to secure my wheel. Here we go, it has the new wheels on it, and now it's time to make it rusty, crusty, layered, industrial, with a pop of some cute colors. So we're gonna be using Purico, I'm gonna be using their Rust, and we're gonna be using some kosher salt, we'll be using their texture medium, and just see what we can do. Honestly, I didn't have a foolproof plan, I just kind of went with it. So we're gonna mix their texture medium with their brand new color, that they just came out with and it's called a bergamot and it's a really nice rich green. So we're going to pour the paint into a jar and then we're going to add the texture medium in there. And then once we're done, we are going to add that texture all over the piece.
Once it's completely dry, I took their color Forest, which is a lighter green, and I did just kind of a layer on here. I didn't have, I didn't worry too much if it was complete coverage, just like you can see with the texture I added. I let a little bit of the wood show through. So this piece or this finish is not gonna be something that you have to have complete full coverage on everything. It's going to add to it when you allow layers to peek through. Once it's completely dry, I took my carbide scraper and I scraped it down. So some of those thicker areas, I put those there on purpose so that it would, I could pull it back and it would show some of the wood grain. So when you add the texture and you do it a little bit thicker in areas, you're able to pull it back just a little bit more and pull it down to the wood grain. So this is what I did for this one. You also could sand this away if you want, but I have found in the last few months that my carbide scraper is really, really awesome for pulling this texture back when you are wanting to do a look like this. Okay, it's time to play around with some kosher salt and their color mermaid. So the reason why I wanted to use kosher salt is because it's got a grittier consistency, whereas the texture medium is a little bit more fine. So I wanted to have different texture on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the mermaid into the mixing bowl that I had, and I'm going to add kosher salt until I get a thick formula that I am comfortable with. Now, because this is a little bit thicker, it's going to go on the piece and it's gonna be a little bit more messy because it's gonna fall down. It's not a big deal. It is going to stick to your piece. Don't think it's gonna fall off. So you can either take a chip brush and kind of dab it on there and make it go on there. Or what I did is I took a plastic scraper and I'm going to scrape it across. And then you can go over it with a chip brush to kind of just push it into the surface to solidify it, the adhesion for this piece. Once this layer of texture is completely dry, we are going to go in with Rainforest, which is another new color by Pierico, and we're going to put this on the entire piece. So again, try to get as much coverage as you can. What I'm doing here is I'm just kind of spraying it with some water so I can push the paint out a little bit more, but we're gonna do a full coat of this on the entire piece. Once that's dry, we are gonna take our rust finish paint, and I'm gonna mix it with some kosher salt so we can get some more texture. I'm gonna mix those together and I'm gonna add it in areas that I want and we're gonna allow that to completely dry. Once that's completely dry, I am going to go in with just a little bit of the paint and I'm gonna put that over top of that dried texture area and then I'm gonna take the activator where you can see right here and I'm gonna put that over top of that wet paint and we're gonna allow it to do its thing because it's gonna take a little bit of time. I had an idea to add some purple. So we're gonna take mulberry, which is another new color, and cranberry, and we're going to do a one-for-one -one mix with these two and make a really pretty purple color. So what I did is I took this mix and I put it in random areas. And what I did is I just put kind of a line of paint and then I'm going to spread it out with that brush. I spritz it with some water and I spread it out even more. And then I take the brush that we used for the rainforest. And I'm gonna spritz it with water and I'm going to kind of blend it in. So that way it looks like it's more natural and it's supposed to be there.
I wanted to add just a little bit more pop of color, so I'm taking Impasto Paint by Art Alchemy in Crimson, and I'm going to take a plastic spatula or a rubber spatula, and I'm going to just lightly spread that across the piece so that it adds a little pop of color, and that way, once it we seal this, all those colors are going to come together. I did one final scrape on the entire piece just so that I can make everything look like it's cohesive. So you can see right here, if I pull back that kosher salt that we had put before, which we hadn't done yet, it's going to make it look even more worn and it's going to, with the, the pink areas, it's going to kind of pull it away a little bit so that you can see some of the rainforest and you can see some of the forest underneath there. And so that was one of the last steps was to take your carbide scraper and do one final scrape on the entire piece. I know you have been waiting to see the rust. This was the next day and this is what came with the rust. And I am going to scrape over the rust as well because again, I want everything to be cohesive. My final step was to take the matte sealer by Purico and seal this entire piece. And you can see how all these colors just deepen and just really come together. And it is like chef's kiss. I needed to add the brand new hardware, which I had gotten from Undead Hardware, which is super, super heavy duty. And I thought that this would go perfect with this piece. So I am just measuring to make sure that it is all cohesive. I'm taking my speed square and I put a little piece of tape so that I knew exactly on each side where it needed to be. So I'm going to screw that in and then I'm going to flip it over and make sure that my hardware is lined up with that piece of tape as well. A speed square is really nice because that lip that you see will sit right on the top of the drawer and so then you know everything is square and exactly where it needs to be. Okay everybody this piece is done. Here it is. I am going to do some up close video because this one has a lot of yummy texture and I took some really good photos and they will be on here as well but I feel like doing the video is going to give you guys even more of a chance to see it. So I'm going to put this on here. Again, this is Purico out of Australia. I hope you guys enjoyed this. There will be a few links. So the hardware is actually from Cassidy, who is the owner of Undead Hardware, and she's got some really awesome designs. I will put her website below. She is based out of the US. And then the there will be a link for the acrylic paint on there. So until next time, everybody, happy creating, and I will see you later. Bye. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand It's me and you on the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two. Hey, darling.
running. You know we're gonna have a really good time. Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright. Pack our bags and get in that car.